There's a giant bumblebee in this home gym. Hey everybody, welcome back. And today, we're gonna go back to the roots, where it all started with health and fitness, and that happens to be back in the gym. So, I talk a lot of things food on here, I talk a lot of things mindset, but if you didn't know, now you know. We actually got started with this because we owned and operated our own strength training gym for 10 plus years. So really where it all started was with exercise and with strength training. And so I still get a lot of questions on how to build your workout program for muscle mass or for longevity or for performance, maybe big benchmarks with like your deadlift or your first pull up or your first push up. I get a lot of questions on technique. I get a lot of questions on how many days to work out in a week. So I've done you know episodes on this before on how to make sure just the plan works for you. So building it with you in mind, that's gonna help you know how many days you can realistically commit to with your current lifestyle, with your preferences, with your goals, whatever it is. But today, we're gonna talk technique and lower body in particular. So I'm gonna show you what my lower body lift looks like today, and I'm gonna tell you why I'm structuring it like this postpartum, and some tips and tricks on if you also are a postpartum, no matter if you're three months, six months, 20 years, some things to pay attention to in your movement patterns. In particular, try not to do high impact stuff, especially if you notice that your hips don't feel the same, your knees don't feel the same, your back doesn't feel the same. We need to train smart, still with the intention to get stronger over time, to build muscle, to be nice and stable in our body, to move fluidly. So I'm gonna share with you how that all works. We're gonna go back to the old trainer coach Angie style. All right guys, let's get started. And hey, if you like today's episode, don't forget to give it a like and comment below and let me know what are you doing for your workouts? What would you like to see more of in regards to fitness? I am so happy to do future episodes on any of it. So drop it below. And hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, I would love if you hit that red button and give me a subscribe. So let's start with what is your ultimate goal with your strength training program? And we're gonna talk lower body today. So we're gonna talk about what is the goal with that? So for myself right now, it is strength endurance. And what that means is I am trying to stick with higher rep and a little bit more moderate weight rather than going really heavy with like strength training or more muscle build hypertrophy. And this is only because of postpartum issues that I am still dealing with. I may be dealing with them forever. So with strength endurance, I'm gonna keep it higher rep, moderate weight, so I can be time under tension longer. So what it forces my body to do is to maintain technique longer and maintain a more stable self as I go through the movement pattern multiple times. You probably don't wanna do that with heavy weight. At some point, you're gonna break down and that's where you're gonna have more risk for injury. But strength endurance is a great place to start if you are learning a new movement pattern, if you are just working to build up more strength, you can go longer rep sets with a lighter, moderate weight in order to do that. And so I'm looking to maintain muscle mass, to maintain and build more stability, and to keep working on technique while I figure out this new pattern with my pelvic floor. And so that's my ultimate goal. But if you're looking to actually build muscle in your lower body, then yes, you have to target those big muscle groups, your prime movers, your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, but you also have to pay attention to make sure that you're working on building up your stabilizer muscles, the ones that help move your prime movers. And so, for you, if you're looking to build muscle, make sure you have built a foundation of stability first. Just like a house, you need a solid foundation before you start going heavier and heavier to promote the muscle growth. And so make sure you know good technique and you know how to move through different ranges of most motion with ease, and then you'll start to progressively overload. So in order for your muscles to adapt, to get stronger, to move more weight and build more muscle, you have to give it feedback. You have to provide that stimulus. And so to progressive overload for strength training to build muscle, you either have to increase the intensity, so the weight that you're using, or the volume, how many reps you're doing. And so for a lot of us, we kind of just stay in that volume range and we just keep doing more and more and more. And at a certain point, you're just gonna kind of get exhausted by it. So I recommend looking at 
trends over time and making sure in a movement pattern, like I'm gonna do the goblet squat today, that you look at building up your weight because the more weight you can move with your body, you're forcing your muscles to get stronger to do that and forcing muscle growth. And so if you are ultimately looking to build up your butt or build up more quads or build up more hamstrings, you need to be increasing the intensity, the weight over time. So tracking that and knowing how you're progressing week to week is super important. Doing random boot camp workouts or video workouts that are just different every time you step in, it just doesn't give your body the feedback it needs to build muscle. And that's why a lot of us are still spinning our wheels because we're like, why am I putting in all the work and I'm not seeing the muscle growth? It's because you need to train. Rather than just doing a workout, we look at it in terms of training. So you have like a four, a six, an eight week program that progresses you over time to warrant that muscle growth. So today I'm gonna share with you technique on those four big movements, but I'm also gonna share with you like why I'm doing that strength endurance. Okay, we're starting out first with the goblet squat. I'm gonna be doing four sets higher rep sets, like 12 to 15, because remember, I'm doing strength endurance. I'm trying to stay time under tension longer in this movement to challenge my joints to stay stable. I like between eight and 12 reps for hypertrophy, for muscle growth. I feel like that's a nice sweet spot to go heavy enough without breaking down in form. So today, goblet squat, I'm gonna be holding a 24 kilo bell, which is like 52 pounds, and I'm gonna go for 12 to 15 reps, resting 90 seconds. So I gotta get started. So, couple things. In your goblet squat, you're holding your bell up here, and it can be two dumbbells, whatever feels comfortable in your rack position. You want to make sure you stay as long and as tall through the top of your head to your tailbone. So if you notice, on the way down, the angle of your shins should match the angle of your torso. Where you might see people squat a lot like this and they tilt over because maybe they have something tight, you know, whether it be in their hips, their knees, their ankles. And so only go as low as you can into the squat while maintaining that nice tall position. So we like to say you're gonna sit your butt back and down, like you're reaching for a chair. So your knees shouldn't slide forward, right? Your butt should go back. So I reach long for that chair, I open up my knees, I sit my butt between my knees, and I keep my chest tall. So I pull my shoulders back, nice and tall through the top of the head. You'll hear a lot of people saying, Squat with your heels, squat with your heels. We recommend you squat with your whole foot, right? Plant your heels, but also plant your toes and the pads of your feet solid to the ground. So now you're rooted all the way through, giving yourself more stability before you take off. Then you reach that butt back, open up those knees. You wanna try to sit full depth squat is butt below the knees, but again, only go as far as you can with a good pattern with that nice tall chest. That's the squat. I also get asked all the time, kettlebells, dumbbells, barbell, bands, what's the best? Usually people are wanting to know what's the best for building muscle. So you honestly just need to make sure you can bring that intensity, that you can build up your weight over time. So dumbbells, kettlebells, and barbells are gonna be your best tools for that. Bands are great for those stabilizer muscles I was talking about to build up more strength with those, but really it's just a supplement for like an active recovery drill or some type of drill to do before you actually hit your squat patterns or your deadlift patterns just to get those muscles firing. And so if you're gonna invest in something to help with your strength training, we say a full dumbbell rack is the best thing you can do, like five all the way up to 50 pounds pairs of those. And then as far as kettlebells go, go, it's a fixed weight, obviously, so you kinda need multiple ones so you can move up the chain with them as far as intensity goes. And then barbells are easy because once you have the barbell itself, which for most people is gonna be 45 pounds, sometimes females will start with the 33 pound bell, you just need plates to keep adding on to get heavier. But biggest bang for your buck, full thing of dumbbells. All right, so some finer points with the step up. The foot on the box is the working leg. The other one there, think about it like a kickstand. 
it's posting, but there's really nothing you're using it for except as a little extra support. And so you wanna plant that entire foot right on the box, okay? So heel is planted, ball of the foot and toes are planted. And then you wanna focus on keeping your weight shifted forward before you take off. And so what I mean by that is a lot of people will start and they're way back here. We want you nice and tall from the start with a tiny shift forward because your weight will go the way that you guide it to go. And so we're gonna focus on planting that foot. The back foot is a kickstand. So see how I have my heel off the ground and then I'll plant this foot through and I'll come on up. So I'm gonna show you. Now, I hear this is a very common thing that people do on the way down, and I want to address it now. So when you come down, you don't want to just fall with your weight coming down to the ground. You want to own it on the way down. So as you start to come from the top position back down, you want to sit into the hip of that working leg. So rather than you just letting your weight fall, you're going to control it and sit into your glute to come back down. So then it becomes quad and glute. Let me show you. Okay, so right here, I'm gonna sit into this hip, I'm gonna reach my butt back, and I'm gonna control it on the way down, rather than just falling. All right, so that's the step up. Plant that foot, shift your weight forward, come up nice and tall, grip that foot hard to the deck, stand up with that weight. Body weight too is okay if you're just learning it with stability, and then that's the step up. Okay, kickstand bed lift. It may be my favorite movement to target glutes and hamstrings. And it feels really good on your body if you ever come up with some like lower back issues or maybe your hips hurt or maybe you just feel like you're not stable in your knees or hips. It is like a single leg deadlift. So if you're ever doing one and you feel like you are wobbling all over, I would regress it to the kickstand deadlift because it's gonna give you a lot more control. It's gonna help you move through the pattern safely, target the muscles we're looking to work, and then figure out your sticking points or where you have asymmetries from your left side to your right side because it's going to show you that in a single leg stance. So for the kickstand deadlift, you line up with your feet staggered. So one foot's in front, the working foot, and the ball of the back foot is right behind the heel, like a kickstand. Let me show you. Working foot, left foot. Kickstand. Okay, so now, once you're in that position, the working leg is the front foot, the one that is planted. So in order to initiate the movement, you wanna sit your butt back as far as you can go, but keeping your hip nice and high. So like the squat, unlike the squat where your hips go back and down to full depth, in a deadlift pattern, a hinge pattern, your hip goes back, but it stays high to get more hamstring. And so once you take your kickstand position right here, you sit back into this hip, reach your butt back as far as you can go, feel your glute and your hamstring fire, push through that working foot, your front foot, stand up tall, squeeze your butt. Butt goes back, hamstring, glute. So see, I'm not dipping low, it stays nice and high, lower than my shoulder, so I'm not here. Big chest, and then I plant through and come all the way up. And you can hold weight in each hand, you can hold weight on the opposite hand as a counterbalance, whatever feels good, but you're making sure that that hip stays nice and high and sits back with a nice flat back focusing on that front foot, doing all the work, creating tension from the ground up, feeling the muscles, glute, and the hamstring working to move that weight. That's the kickstand deadlift. It is my favorite movement. Lower body day is done. I did not show you the reverse lunge that I did body weight in my calf raises, because I really wanted to focus on the big three that I was doing today, which was the goblet squat, the step, ups and the kickstand deadlift. Those were the three that I was really working on, still maintaining my muscle mass and doing that strength endurance, so time under tension longer. But remember, if your goal is to build more muscle, hypertrophy, just make sure you are choosing those big compound movements, your squat patterns and your hinge patterns to build up more quad, 
glute and hamstring definition and make sure you're progressively overloading over time. If you are postpartum and you feel like things don't move as fluid as they used to, well, I would stick with a strength endurance type program right now to rebuild up strength technique stability. It's okay if you're not building muscle all the time. Sometimes we got to take a step back to get stronger so we can come back and perform harder every single session. So that was today's episode. Equipment you should get for your home gym, how to build strength or strength endurance, how to look at where you're at postpartum and figure out what's the best plan for you and a little bit of technique work too. So that's all I got. Hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll chat soon. Feel like things don't move as fluid. There's a bee.